What's good, everybody? This is Kenneth Barry here. Another episode of Touchdowns and Tangents. Yes, we're back. Technically, this is not a solo episode. Uh, Pete just happened to get um, his car, or his car got bitch slapped by Mother Nature. Um, so yeah, he's, yeah, pretty much out to El Nino. Yeah, or isn't it La Nina? Technically. I don't this, know what it's it not, is. La, La Nina season. I never knew which one was which. But um, all I know is I was driving on the 10 freeway last night, going up a hill, and my car almost died like three times. She, East LA. She did and right. And <laughs> the 10 freeway is impossible to see at night already as it is. And when it's raining, it's even worse. So, yeah, I pretty much wasn't trying to mess with that. So, thus, I worked from home today. And now here I am again working from home. Safety first, man. Safety first. Glad you're okay. Yeah, man. And I'm nice and warm in these sweats. Chilling. All right, dog. We don't need the visual. No one needs to know your sweat. Like, oh, ever since <laughs> Ryan said what she said, like, you've been acting away, bro. Like, relax. Fall back. She might flame you. Oh, gosh. Right. But anyway, um, lot to talk about this week. But most importantly, man. Let's just give another fucking shout episodes out to us. Of running. We literally, we literally have a hundred under our fucking belt. We're stunt one on one. Shout out to G Unit Tony Ayo. Did you just say free Tony Ayo? Is that really what happened in 2018? Is nah. that what's going on? Personally, I'm a Lloyd Banks fan, and I really think he he got squashed by 50. But that's a whole nother story. Oh, yeah, he 50, did 100%. 50, got, 50 squashed a lot of people around him, apparently now, including his own kids. Like it's it's nasty. But he made hook it. Okay. But, like, he doesn't talk to, <laughs> he doesn't talk to his own kid. I just want to see 50 beef with Mayweather again. I mean, not really, because unless, like, they're going to do a charity event at, like, a Barnes and Nobles, it's not going to be funny. Cause that's how petty fifty is, and that's exactly where I would have. I would have a, I would literally have, like a boxing. I'd have. I used all the boxing analogies possible, and I'd have Floyd Mayweather, Larry Merchant, and Teddy Atlas, just in the Barnes and Noble. But yeah, man. Real quick before we 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 get into the content, because like you said, there's a lot to talk about. But man, what are your thoughts from episode one hundred? Now that we've had a week. That it's passed now that you've been, had a chance to listen to it. Like the fact that I'm, I'm now sober listening to it. Bruh. <laughs> uh, shout out to Brandon's punk ass. Uh, he killed me with jokes. He killed everyone with jokes. Yeah, he look, he did. Like he really hey, stuffed uh, us. Sh- shout out to Jordan for telling you like it is. I've been telling <laughs> you for a lost cause for like a decade. Bro, I'm glad finally someone came on and agreed with me. Like, no, nah, the thing is, Jordan would have told me this to my face via text message, like off to the side, <laughs> <laughs> like in an elevator. Like he would, he would have like talked about it. Like, oh, you already know, you already know, you fucking up. You already know, you're like for the hundredth episode, you're way too turnt. You're like, you're way too much right now. Shout out to Jordan. <laughs> I, I had to get him in there though. I was like, well, like, where can we find Jordan at home? But nah. Um, yeah. Hey, and uh, and shout out to Nick for calling in and getting better. You know, he yeah. learned learned from his mistake last time. Exactly, he really and did. He improved. And shout out to Wu for keeping the drinking game going. Like, <laughs> all, I, all I know is like our friend, our our group of friends. Like, we probably shouldn't all go out drinking together. Like, some crazy shit's gonna happen. <laughs> Actually, no, we should do that. We should just all somehow end up somewhere in the same place. On the same day at the same time. Like all 10 of us. So and shout out to Mancini, too, for pulling up. I saw him last night at a event. Mancini. He said he's going to snuff you if you keep answering all his damn questions on air. If I keep answering all his questions. Well, sorry, Mancini. I got to do it. <laughs> man, man, first off, I used to play. It's all right. I was doing the same shit at the event last night. I was like. Since my friend over here is being shy and quiet, I guess I'll be his agent. Like, bro, I'm literally we, we, telling his whole story. Like, Mancini's really our little brother, and we treat him like that. <laughs> like, we definitely, like, we bust his balls way too much. But it's like, you just have to do it because it's your little brother. 
He's a really good person. Shout out to Mantini. I don't say that a lot about, about a lot of white people. I'm joking. Mantini's, He's not. Mantini's blacker than honestly most people I know. Like, but Mantini's one of the most soulful cats I honestly can say I've ever met. Like, one of the few people who actually can go toe-to-toe with me when it comes to music catalogs and playlists like 30 years ago. Mantini's got a damn good playlist. Not just because it's the Eagles and David Bowie and and the Beatles and all that other stuff, but man. Yeah, but by the way, also, uh, nobody knows more about the Beatles than Ryan Mantini does. That's just a stone cold fact. Um, all right, man, but, yeah. but let's get to the shits, man. Oh, yeah, and shout out to Let's my, get to the topic you've I, been building up all week. Yeah, uh, shout out to my little sister, Chelsea. She's Her 21st birthday was yesterday. I love you, sis. Uh, you're honestly a better person to me because, like, you didn't lose your smile. I did, and I also just, like, have a very realistic and jaded view of people and human beings. You have somehow managed to uh, keep that light. So kudos to yeah, you. Yeah, man. You know I, your pre- I shit. appreciate your positivity and sensitiveness and setting a good example as a brother. But can you save that for the end of the show? You know, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> nah, I wasn't. That sh- I wasn't saying no that one, shit. No, 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 no. no, no, no. One, as touching, as touching and nice as you're being right now, no one wants to lead with that. Sorry. No, I kind of like, <laughs> like Jordan said. I have to lead with love because the shit we're about to talk about is. Really heavy hitting, pardon the pun. Bruh. Ow. But yeah, man. Why'd you say ow? I was talking to Michael from Courtside um, off air. Shout out to to Good News. Shout out to X Squad Affiliates. Shout out to FBC Radio. Our homes. And shout out to Speaker for finally getting this shit together. And putting all our stuff back on Spotify and everywhere else. And shout out to to Obi, man. We just signed a we just signed a, a year deal with speakers. So we, re- we recouped. We recouped. They restructured our contract, so we're good now. It's like when CM Punk uh, won the WWE title in Chicago, and his contract expired, so they had to renegotiate with him for him to come back. That's what we did. We pulled. We pulled on that. But yeah, man. Schools in. Hunt, Schools in everybody. You you you've been teasing it on Twitter all week, so. You hey, started a, I saw you like about to go off, and I was like, "Wait!" And we talked about it. Actually, we kind of talked about it a lot in here on uh, Monday. We were watching the game on the, the random pull up. Keith, good news! Shout out to Keith for providing all that chicken, that spicy ass chicken from Louisiana, and them cold ass fries that actually were kind of good. And uh, you know, other other adult beverages. Shout out to low you. key cold fries. Cold fries are actually pretty good. Low key, no, secretly not. from where. Rallies. It depends, yes. but 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 they can hit the kettle. Shout out to the fucking kettle, bro. The kettle's amazing. I've never been there. Every time my girl wants to take me there, it's always packed, and we end up going somewhere else. Bro, it was empty. It was it was it was kind of packed, but it was like kind of empty when I took my sister on Sunday. And of course, she would get like no. Nah, I'll say that for the end of the show. I'm saving that. We're gonna save the kettle for the end of the show. But yeah, we might just have to have an episode of uh, Touchdowns and Tangents live from the kettle. Or uh, wait, uh, wake and bake. But anyway, uh, the Kareem Hunt situation, he was released by the Chiefs pretty much for the reason that uh, when what he told them and what they saw on the tape, he lied, essentially, about the situation. But there's multiple reports coming from multiple people, um, including the witnesses that were there and police. That's why they weren't reluctant to press charges. Because... Uh, Here's from what in the video from what you see is him coming outside talking to a chick at the end of the hall, but you can't really see it. Um, this young white girl and arguing back and forth. People are trying to like get in the way and separate them. The girl walks up on him like they're like she's gonna swing on him in his face, yelling back and forth. And then eventually Kareem Hunt just snaps. Um he starts pushing people off of him. Like, she pushed him. Like, she he, she pushed him. He kind of pushed her. But it was more like just a swipe of the hand kind of thing. But from just how it looked, like, you could see the moment when he snapped with no audio. 
Like that's kind of well, important. To... I, I think the biggest thing was like you could see in the whole two minute. There's about a minute and a half of like his friend and like his girlfriend trying to hold him back and keep him under control. And was his girlfriend like, the white chick with the blonde hair? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was. Because I was like, I was wanted to make sure. sure because I was like, she was really like everybody was trying to hold him down. He was pretty much Thanos in fucking um, Avengers: Infinity War, and literally. Like he Captain America, he he punched, he pushed his friend so hard that the friend he pushed the dude so hard that the dude who got pushed into the girl that he was arguing with flew, like the shit was crazy. That that looked worst, and like really, like the people who were trying to hold Kareem I mean, back took it, the worst of that beating. I'm pretty sure Kareem Hunt power cleans like 400 pounds. No, like 600. A running back like that. Yeah, he's built. Yeah, well, you're not you're not that. He's Toledo's all time leading rusher. Stocky and explosive yeah. for no damn reason. But it, people were trying to compare it to the Ray Rice situation. It was nothing like the Ray Rice situation. It was no no nowhere near or physically Tyreek bad. Hill. Yeah, or Ruben Fa- Foster. Tyreek Hill beat his pregnant baby mother, and we don't have video of that. But yeah, uh, he was at, o- he was Randall, at Oklahoma State. Or um, not Randall Gregory, the other one. Randy Gregory. Uh, what other Randy would it be? The other Greg Hardy, sorry. Yeah, Greg Hardy. Yeah, he threw his girl in Apollo's shotguns. That that's some whole another next level shit. But um back to back to hunting the the scene in lock in the hallway. So Kareem Hunt is out here just punching Captain America and Black Panther in the fucking face. Like it's uh the scene in Wakanda, like the last scene. Um just launching cats. Like they're trying to physically hold him back. And he is showing you why he led the league in rushing his rookie year. And he is just flinging people like they're infants, like they're children at a birthday party. And But, dog, uh, can we talk about the most, like, laugh- laughable moment and also memorable moment of the whole incident, which yeah. is, like, the last seconds of the video? Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who don't – who. Haven't seen it. After this whole altercation happens, the girl's just kind of sitting there crying. Everyone kind of walks back into the room, and Cream's about to walk back into the room, and he's like, "He he, 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 he shame he, kicks her. He technically he technically kicks the girl. It's like we kick honestly, dust on somebody. It's more of like a kick push, like a like a like a like a you, sit you're, down you're a type of, of thing, like." Like something you you do to like get your dog out of your way so you don't step on it. Yeah, it's like it's like when you kick your drunk friend for being stupid when they pass out finally, and you're like, okay, I can finally go lay down. Like, I'm gonna go back. But Shut if, your ass. But up. if you only listen to the media interviews, you make it sound like he curb stomped her. You make it sound like he raped which, Ruther, and I didn't like that at all. Which which I mean, it it doesn't make it any better, right? But at the same time. Yeah, I couldn't help but laugh after that kick because I was like, "Really, cream?" And I was like, "Really, do you? He's really? A, that's the kick everyone's talking about?" Like, but let's be honest, we've all been in situations with drunk girls like that, especially in Vegas. And even if you take out Vegas, like in LA, anywhere, you've been in situations where a drunk girl's gotten in your face. You know, you can't hit her. She says a bunch of shit to rile you up. Now. Apparently, it was some girls who wanted to whoop her ass from what's being reported by a bunch of different people. And that's why. Hold on, hold on, wait. Keep good news, man. Y'all really think he should have came out clean the first time? Um, He probably should have come clean. But um, if someone's calling me the N-word 26 times, I don't care for Jesus Christ. Something's bad going to happen to you. You're not just gonna keep saying that and live. I think the unscathed. weird thing about this whole situation, and even the thing you brought up, you know, and, we're just and we're bringing scratching up his the side, surface to this, which is which is which you know, not a lot of people are talking about, you know, Kareem side and basically why no charges have been filed and stuff like that. But even besides that, the weird thing about it to me is like, why did they have her phone? Oh, because that's some real G <laughs> shit. That's some real G shit. Your friend's taking her phone so she can't call nobody. Cause you okay. See, we gotta break this down on a G level. On a street level. Um 
the way your parents gave you game or should have gave you game. So for everybody who doesn't have game and doesn't understand how to handle things in that situation and doesn't understand friend code, guess like what? You? No, I, I totally understand friend code. That's why anytime you've been around me in situations, nothing's ever happened to you because I was there. Don't don't make me bring up scenarios, Pete. I can text you the scenarios that I'm exactly thinking of in my head, and you'll start laughing on the phone. But anyway, um, when you with your friends and some shit goes down and you don't want to record it, yeah, you got to take the other side's phone. That's what you're supposed to do. You hold your bands down. You hold your people down, especially yeah. If, but the whole the whole let me thing get no, no, let me finish. Phone, the whole thing was her phone was in their room. Yeah, here's and that's what we're gonna so get to next. That, she was in the lobby on the first floor talking shit to him. That these are some of the reports. Some of the main reports, people on his side who they magically haven't interviewed anybody in his camp, but you know No they have. Like, but you haven't seen them on the news. There's video of it. How, like is it being pushed on ESPN and all these other news cycles? I have yet to see it and I've looked for everything. I don't see it being I presented think, to me. I think they keep showing the Kareem's clip of him fault. push. No, that's also Kareem's fault. But it happened eight months ago, bro. Dawkins interview. Oh yeah, he rushed. He to didn't do bring that. that up. He he dug everything, in, and I think that's why it's not bringing up is because, because none of it really makes sense. He lost in the court of public opinion the moment that they saw that he pushed a white girl. In Vegas, I, I, drunk I think as hell. Even besides all that, and how he was acting on that, that video, where they it lost makes you credibility. Look where they lost credibility was when the friends were trying to uh, trying to make it sound like like the girl really just followed them. Um, like nah, but that no, we don't know because allegedly, I guess one of the girls came with one of his friends. But I guess once they exactly. found, once they found out she was she, underage, he kicked her out the room, which is what you're supposed to do. I have no problem with that. Well, now, yeah, that's one side the of it. Fact the other that, side of it was that he was trying to splash, and she wasn't with it. Okay, can we be so honest? They kicked her out. Can we be honest? If you're not trying to smash, and you just here kicking it with me, and we not friends, and I don't know you. And you're not trying to smash. Oh, yeah, Why you need to be in my fucking sure. space in my room in Vegas that you aren't paying for? Get for the fuck sure, out. Excuse but why, my language. Why, why, why not just say that instead of just being like, Bro, oh, I never you, met I, this girl and she followed me. Hey, man, and it's, like it's a form of protecting so yourself. That, but I'm also, his girlfriend was there, so you never know what they might, they might be swingers. You never know what they're into. I'm not into their personal life like that. Because obviously, I think his girl's still with him. So, and I think he has a, he have a kid or something. And even besides all that. Like, there's a lot of layers here. Kareem Hunt. We got to talk about groupie culture is, in a minute. Is even besides all that, this is his third incident this year. Didn't he get caught? He got like... into a he got caught into a fight in June with George Atkinson the third. They were that's out though. somewhere, I think, in Ohio, Notre Dame, and they played. got someone. Some someone did something to George Atkinson. He got a fight, and Kareem jumped in. A bunch of people jumped in. It was a big brawl. Again, no charges were I don't pressed. Count that. Joey Porter and uh, then, sucker punch Levi Jones in Vegas. Remember? And then there was, and then I guess Kareem Hunt sought somebody else, like in January. People should stop trying Kareem Hunt. Well, I think Kareem Hunt also probably needs some anger management. So, oh no, no, he needs some intelligence management because you need to stop being in situations where you have to fucking swing on people. How about that? Exactly. Bro, oh, you ain't got to shit to do with anger. paying people to swing for you. I'm saying, I know girls who beat up girls and like it. That's who I'm calling for if sure. I got a situation with a chick and she's in my face. I'm going to just hurt your feelings and say your father hey, never called you. he can call my girl. My girl is with the shit. Fam, why are you putting your girl out there like that? Now people going to, now somebody in, in South Bay going to try to have her catch a body. What's wrong with you? You keep that Trying in to the get top. her in the UFC. Okay, I respect that then. All right, cool. <laughs> get her, at least get her on the CSUN boxing team, right? Like, yo, she got hands. <laughs> but nah, man, but, it's it's a couple of different areas of this. And yeah, like you said, he he's had these multiple instances. But I'm again, I don't count the one with George Jackson because NBA players, NFL players, athletes catch fades all the time. Yeah, newsflash, everybody. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Athletes catch the fade behind the scenes all the time. It's been going on forever. 
Remember <laughs> when uh, Richard Sherman and Michael Crabtree had their thing at a, at a they had a little, you know, one on one. They got in each other's faces at a charity event. Like I said, Jerry Joey Porter, former Steelers linebacker, sucker punched and beat up allegedly Levi Jones apparently in and in, in Vegas the week after a game the week after they played each other or it might have been the week they played nah, each other. No, but this is different because no, 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 no. That was way two, worse, bro. That they had these, video of them two stomping each other out. These two dudes stomped out some regular guy. And beat him to like a pole. They were fighting it. Oh, wait. So they were beating up a guy together or they were fighting each other? They were beating up a guy together. George Atkins started the fight. And then Cream Hunt and a bunch of other people came in and finished it. Hey, dog. Teamwork makes a dream work. If I see you fighting somebody, guess what? I'm in the fight too. Again. Yeah, but but you don't need to be kicking people when they're already asleep. I mean. So it was on some Suge Knight, Tupac shit in Vegas? Yeah, pretty much, exactly. Okay, but even then, we can't talk about something that happened in the streets and we weren't there. That's just the rule. Uh, I'm talking about what's being documented and what was allegedly brought forth with this chick. Well, that's that's what that's what Hump is yeah, up against. He, yeah, he's so, up so against. That's, that's why he got released. That's why he's going to face six games. At least, if not more. Yeah, he, he and, kind of really fucked things up for himself. And, I mean, even even Michael Vick, you know, former Chiefs coaching intern, you know, Andy Reid's, one of Andy Reid's other reclamation projects, you know, extended a hand to Kareem Hunt and just basically said, you know, you know, I'm here to help. I'm willing to help him. You know, I don't condone what he did, but. He just needs some help. He needs to get some people, some better people around him, get some guidance, and you know, still young enough to turn his life around. True. Um, I would also say that you should just know who you need to have around you, and that's why you don't have strangers around you. Because in this case, if this chick didn't pay for the room and she's yelling outside the room for twenty six minutes, the n word, like, bro. Somebody should have vetted that before they invited her. Like that didn't just pop up because she got drunk, or and they wouldn't. And let supposedly, her out the and supposedly, like, Kareem Hunt tried to call security to have her escorted her out before they, he even went out there. Yeah, when do white girls actually get ex- escorted out by security ever? Tell me when that's happened. No, it happens. It? Oh, it happens like if it's a big enough thing, and they have to eventually get people out. But like I've never just seen a one random drunk white girl get handed walked out by security. I've never seen one. I've seen a group. I've never seen one. I've never seen any well, one drunk the, girl. I've never seen any one thing, drunk girl period the, just get carried out by security. I think the other thing to remember is that Kareem Hunt was what a third round pick. Yeah, fourth round he, pick. He 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 definitely not ever getting a payday. So he was pe- playing on like what five hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand. So I mean, like, yeah, that's a lot of money to the average person, but that's not for, a lot to the NFL player. For a guy who was leading the league in rushing and about to probably go over a thousand exactly. yards his, exactly. in his second so, year. So his production and his image is bigger than what his paycheck is. So we just have to kind of keep that in mind. Like he's not at the scale where he can have a ton of goons around him. But I think he definitely should have his and, his loyal group of friends around him, and they did try to protect and he him. Might, and he might not even be that recognizable to like the average person, who especially like who after one season. Who doesn't follow football? Doesn't live in Kansas City? Didn't watch him play at Toledo? Uh, a bunch of other exactly. stuff. Exactly. But in this situation, I think like okay, we everyone can agree that you don't you shouldn't hit women. But I'm bringing up the premise that, like, yo, why do women feel it's always okay to jump in a dude's face? Just it's true. like you, like that. Don't use your privilege as a woman. Like, no, you can still get punched in the face. Um, it happens. It, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not condoning violence. But last time I checked, if you are born on this earth and you're a human being, you are susceptible to getting your ass whooped, whether your parents did it or somebody did it to you in middle school or elementary or high school. People get beat up every day. You do not have the right to. She threw a tantrum, like she threw a real tantrum. 
Like, what legitimate reason can you tell me you are outside of a grown man's hotel room yelling the N-word? That's a specific epithet, by the way. That's not an accident. Like, you don't just you don't just say, like, oh, I'm sorry, I said this word 26 times in a row. I said this word for 20 straight minutes. Like, that wasn't an accident. So already, that's a red flag against her. And clearly she's out here trying to be violent. She clearly knows she can't whoop that dude's ass in a street fight. Yet you are in his face with your fists up, pushing him. Like, honestly, in that point, you deserve to get hit. Maybe not by him, but somebody should have, some girls should have been smacking her up in the hallway. Personally. That's just, like, the way I was raised and what I've seen, like, that situation should have been deaded on multiple fronts by multiple people. And it was handled really wrong by a bunch of adults in Vegas. Drunk, obviously. And maybe high. I don't know. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, unless they, you know, TMZ, which, by the way, TMZ are definitely the police. TMZ are the feds. You, like, honest. And that's another point I have, a problem I have. How do you get constantly get all these footage of these NFL players, in particular the black ones, committing domestic violence or punching people, hitting people, getting into fights. But you never see audio or video of all these NHL players who commit domestic violence at a much higher rate and violent crimes at a much higher rate in their sport, but it never gets talked about. It ne- it like it get, it comes across the ticker a couple of times on ESPN. Like Patrick Kane was the last big case where he beat up a taxi driver. I mean, driver. seriously, but we don't is, talk about. Are that. you are you really making that argument? Really, I'm that's lazy. That's not lazy. It's a fair point. That's lazy as fuck. TMZ every sorry, t- every time TMZ drops Bro, a video, you know it's of an NFL player or a basketball hockey, player. All, but we don't. First of all, first of all, wait, wait, hold up. First of all, and don't give me the whole hockey's hockey not that popular in general. Doesn't doesn't get noticed, especially on ESPN. But no one gets yeah, outraged. Any sort of hockey news comes across the ticker because but no one got outraged number one, when Patrick Kane did that. Nobody cares about hockey. Number two, non-white ESPN people. doesn't have distribution rights to ESPN, so they damn sure don't give a fuck about hockey. And lastly, you're talking about TMZ being the police. They're the police. People bring footage. To TMZ. No, they they didn't. Uh, they got footage of Demi people Lovato bring, in the hospital very people quickly. People bring TMZ footage, and TMZ pays for it. And TMZ is actually one of the most credible journalist organizations because but still nine the times out of ten they've gotten it right. Yeah, they're still the police, though. Just I like, mean, just like them and a couple. I other mean, what it, what it, what it, what it, what did um. What did Orwell say? They only catch NBA. And no, NBA journalism so. Journalism is everything that people don't want to see, and anything else is public relations. Hey. Hey. Yeah, man. So I'm not – I'm not here for TMZ smoke. It's not. It's not their fault. I mean, if you really want to get into the shit, it's probably more of a cultural thing to where, you know, they're just people are more like people are more likely to pull out their camera phone on a black man doing something wrong than a white man, just and in general. Like they call the cops on kids for selling water. Black kids, but that's not really water. that's not really TMZ's fault. No, I mean, but I'm not I'm not making that correlation. I'm just saying every time some wild shit happens, TMZ always has the footage. Remember when Demi Lovato OD'd and they knew what hospital she was at for anybody else. And we're about to release footage and all that's what I'm saying. Like you gotta like yeah, not every public relate not every public information request gets granted. You gotta have some juice behind you. And Harvey Levin is an attorney, so that helps. But like I mean that's all I, I that's all I have to say about that. Like it's it's weird. Because remember at one point Deadspin was breaking a lot of stories. And it just kind of switched over. But, yeah, when it comes out to wrap up this whole, on my end at least, for the Kareem Hunt situation, um, there's about 15 things you could have done that would have prevented you from being in that situation, and you failed to see all the signs before it happened. So now you got to live with that. That's your fault. Um, I don't like the media's constant portrayal 
of the big angry scary black boogeyman. That shit's kind of getting real tired and old. Um, because this girl was violent with him, and it's on video, so you can't really say you were assaulted when you assaulted somebody else. And we're yelling racial the epithets thing, outside the room. The That's why they probably that, didn't press charges as hard. The other thing that killed Kareem Hunt was the interview with Lisa Salters on Sunday. He was pressured to 15 do that. minutes before. No, he wanted that interview. He requested that interview. Oh. Oh, that's he, he did that 15 minutes I thought his before game day. Him to do it. And the thing was, like, number one, he didn't apologize to the victim or the other person until like eight minutes in. Which but I mean, if, is you're, not sorry, if you're not sorry, he didn't, don't apologize. He didn't, go, he didn't go into details about anything. He was just like, it doesn't matter what happened. It's a long night. What I did was wrong, pretty much. And lastly, That's a kid I mean, apology. just look, just watching the video, he doesn't really look remorseful. Like, he looks like he's really holding back a laugh the whole time, which, I mean, I get seeing the video and seeing everything, but at the same time, it doesn't help your image as, you know, someone who comes off as a 23-year-old with anger issues to not really understand the severity and seriousness of what you did. Especially when you're sitting across from, you know, a black female journalist and, you know, millions of white people are watching across the country and they want to see, uh, you know, brown knows them. And when you don't give that to them, it just makes you makes you look even more of a dick. Put it to you that way. He would have been better off not saying anything. That's why I was like, somebody, somebody pressured him. Or like he got pressured, but there was no need to do that interview, especially if it came out eight months ago. I'm like, where? First off, the NFL told the chief not to pursue it. I would have been passing the buck off to the front to the NFL. Like, bro, they could have handled this months ago. This was handled months ago, and the fact that like it's being brought up now that's literally the definition of double jeopardy. Like, well, I think you're killing me for something that happened in the past that you couldn't get me supposedly. The the NFL usually does that where they they do an investigation and they tell the team to back off because they're doing an investigation and they don't want the team to interfere. And the other side of it was the victim stopped cooperating and didn't press charges and Kareem Hunt wasn't arrested. And I think because of, you know, his whole story and coming up and, you know, being a young player, I think he got the benefit of the doubt. And that's why the Chiefs felt so betrayed because they did believe him. And I'm sure the NFL did too. And the sad part is, as a black man, he should have known he was never going to get the benefit of the doubt once that video came out. So you, like, that, behind the scenes, he should have been totally off and up front. And I get that, but at the same time, like, it's like, and I, I think that is one thing he, he did say that I felt like was true and honest, was, you know, seeing that video, I realized, you know, that was that. I realized that that did happen, that it was true. So it's either, you know, he was blacked out wasted, or he was just blacked out raging, but either way. He looked like he was blacked out both. Know, I I think he uh, either way I think it made him realize that you know there's another side to him that he needs to he work needs to work on. on. Yeah, like, it's like when you see yourself, you're like, oh shit. That's why you don't jump straight into an interview. Like, if I was his agent, I'd have been like, he doesn't owe any of y'all an explanation. We'll let the legal system ha- let it play out, but. My client right now is going to go to therapy and anger management to work some things out. And it told him to lay off the alcohol, too. But, like, that was in Vegas. It was eight months ago. Like, a lot of things happened. And maybe he's embarrassed of that. And maybe he's in a different place. Or maybe he's just, like... It's, like, it's weird. When you're that young... And you're going through things, and you feel like you're at the top of your game, and you feel untouchable. Like, once you get the slightest dose of reality, it changes you. 
And I think, sadly, this is his wake-up call. Because before this, he really didn't have any red flags coming out of college. Like he was well, and the other two incidents. Yeah, but that was that was like recent, but it wasn't like his rookie year. His rookie year, he was a stand up kid, took the NFL by storm. Second year, you know, his head maybe got a little bit too big. I still feel like he deserves another shot because there's too much in the situation I can point to to where it's like, bro, if that was you, what? Like everyone says, it's easy to walk away. Until someone's in your face being violent and hostile with you and you're drunk in Vegas and God knows what time in the morning. Oh, and they're also yelling racial, specific racial epithets at you. You can't, you don't get to I tell mean, people how they I mean, react I agree to things. With, I agree with you, and I think he should get the second chance. But realistically, but we know. I don't know if he will, given the the public perception of him, based off the interview and fuck Larry and Johnson, based by off the way. of the timeliness of everything. Yeah, like I'm, I just had to say a uh, special fuck you to Larry Johnson. I know I've pretty much broke the record for like cursing in the first twenty minutes, but he had to really get on his soapbox. He always says he can't just says some dumb stuff on Twitter, but he always has to get on his soapbox and be like, "Damn, little bro, I thought you learned from my situation." Like, dog, did you even know to him when he was until like when he was in college? Like, stop acting like oh. We should have learned from Larry Johnson's situation. Like, bro, no one's thinking about you, Larry Johnson, as a cheat, as a great. As You're a wrong. Like, I get that. No, but I mean, realistically, were we really thinking as soon as this thing happened with, uh, with um, Kareem Hunt? We're like, damn, the same thing happened with Larry Johnson, or a similar thing happened with Larry Johnson. Nobody had Larry <laughs> Johnson on the tip of their fucking tongue, bro. No. Don't insult my intelligence <laughs> and yours. Come on. No one was <laughs> like he interjected himself into that on some Ray J type shit. That's why I was like, really? <laughs> on some Ray J with fucking love and hip hop where he had his beanie on in seven hundred different ways and fashions. No one was thinking about Larry Johnson. No one. I I'm telling you. No one was thinking you know Penn State wasn't even thinking about Larry Johnson when that shit happened. Like, bro, he injected himself into a situation. Like damn. and then he had the whole Instagram part. I was like, "Dog, you whack for that. That's whack. Just shut up. You ain't go- if you want to go reach out to him and be a mentor before, don't do it now. Like when Fifty was all around Takashi Six Nine, and now that he got caught up by the feds, he's like, "Stay away from me." Like, bro, that's trash. Like, don't don't that that's clout chasing to me. That's another form of clout oh, chasing. Because that- because then. Larry Johnson speaking like as if he's some moral authority. It's like, bro, what if you're still a piece of shit? Who who are you to say <laughs> that? You said that to get some extra followers, like, and he said some kind of problematic, sketchy stuff. Honestly, for about six months now on Twitter, but whatever. I I just thought that was trash. But um, anyway, right, anything uh, else? Let's get to the the, the other. Situation. The shit that's NFL. way. This is way worse, by the way. The Washington Deadskins. <sighs> yeah. Not, not only are they dead in the playoff race, like you mentioned last week, they're morally and ethically but, dead because of that racist ass name they have. But there's one. your boy Colt McCoy was hurt once again. Don't ever say a Texas quarterback is my boy, boy again. Don't ever say a Texas quarterback. came in. That's your boy. Y'all both speak the same amount of Spanish. Bro, I'm mad. My group chat was calling me Pete Sanchez. You are Pete game. Sanchez, dog. You're Pete Sanchez. It's okay. You would have taken the chance yeah, to man. go to... You would have went to... Uh, what do you go? Modern Day or Mission Viejo? You would have totally went to Mission Viejo if you had the chance. Yeah, I'm cool. Hey, uh... Oh, hey, dude. Oh, oh, Bu- Buff Humble good? Mark Sanchez recovered a fumble. He handed off. So, oh, by the way, shout out to Adrian. Everything's right. Shout out to the goat Adrian Peterson who had a ninety-yard touchdown run, the oldest running back in NFL history to have a ninety-yard touchdown run on his route to possibly getting a thousand yeah, yards this year. I'm shout out to Adrian Peterson who's petty. better than Earl Campbell. I'm not going to take your low hanging petty. I'm just going to let you have your little moment. Because you know Adrian Peterson. By the way, he passed. He tied Jim Brown with that touchdown run. Still look anyway, like he had to four four speed. The Redskins, man. So yeah, they have a the messed Redskins. up QB situation, and Jay Gruden, poor Alex, pretty Smith. much 
being a dumbass that he is, took the took the took the Colin Kaepernick bait. He pretty much was asked, "Hey Jay, why didn't you sign Colin Kaepernick?" You know, have you talked about Colin Kaepernick, White Sun, Mark Sanchez, blah, 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 with you? And pretty much, dude, went on this whole, like, five-minute talk about how they had to consider it, but realized that he wasn't a fit for offense. Even though he is, because it's other his own, it's his own scheme. Which Which, by the way, Ed Reed tweeted out an uh, article from FTW which is um, under the USA Today, which basically went through, it's called For the Win, basically went through detailing exactly all the play calls that the Redskins made with Mark Sanchez and then showed instances of Colin Kaepernick doing it both under Jim Harbaugh, who is a descendant of the Gruden coaching tree, and... Chip Kelly, who, as we know, is one of the godfathers of a lot of the modern concepts we're seeing in the NFL, and basically showing that not only does Colin Kaepernick fit in the Deskins' offense, but they actually have to adjust the offense more for Mark Sanchez's immobile ass than they ever would have for Colin Kaepernick. So, yeah, Jay Gruden, we know why you didn't sign Colin Kaepernick. You really didn't have to say anything on it. But the fact that you did, you pretty much plaxicoed yourself. Which is not surprising because your last name is Gruden. So there you go. You, You... you you can clean you can clean up from there now. I think I got my pity off. Bruh. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. So <laughs> Man, I mean you did a really great job there. I only just got a sweep in mind. <laughs> so uh <laughs> when it comes down to this whole Gruden situation, again, they have one of the more athletic lines in the league, even though most of their players three of the starting linemen are all on IR. Uh, Colt McCoy fractured his fib, broke his leg, so he's out for the year. Which I'm actually surprised. I kind of felt bad for Colt McCoy. I did, but I don't because I remember him playing against Alabama, and everybody was like, "Texas is back," and then they had their soul taken. Um, and he played like crap. He got hit. He got hit hard one time and had a dead nerve in his arm, and he was done. Like I feel like Colt McCoy made a deal with like some sort of entity where it was like, oh, I'm gonna give you all these tools to be like a really solid quarterback, but I'm never gonna actually let you put it all together because of injuries and inept offensive lines. Damn, that's that's actually really good. (laughs) He didn't have the strongest arm. He is actually really mobile. Surprisingly, he's kind of mobile at Texas, but I mean, I mean, like Colt McCoy's a better football player than Johnny Manziel. He's a legit poor man's Alex Smith. No, he's a legit poor man's Josh McCown. Underrated, underrated athlete, and the only person who had more wins in college than him was Kellen Moore. Shout out to Boise State, even though they choked against Fresno State at home in the Mountain West title game. Oh, we'll get to college Take football. Fresno State's first Mountain West title in like how many years? Since Derek Carr, I think. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Jeff Tedford, former Cal head coach. Cleaning it up out there. But uh, when it comes to the whole Deadskin situation, man, that's not even the worst thing going on. That's Ruben Foster. But yeah, when, you, man. When, when you think about the fact that they trotted Doug Williams out there to make that stupid-ass statement, and just Daniel Snyder's dumbass. It's just like, Which, by the why way, do you keep you shitting speak, down your not leg? That, not that you speak for the whole black community, but like, Most how of, do you feel about Doug Williams? Like, is 
bro, he's just trying to keep his job. And he's <laughs> like, it's, not, it's like I mean, the same like, way I feel yeah, about Jim Brown, the black quarterback to win the to win the Super Bowl, the but only, like the only. he also works for the Redskins. So it's funny. Like, hey, man, a job is a job. But I don't. Do we count Russell Wilson? As a, <laughs> do we count Russell Wilson as a black quarterback? Can we have a? Uh, I don't really. Uh, I, don't I mean, very really Huh? He's married to Sierra. I don't. But like, do we really count? Even though he has a black father, do we really count Russell Wilson as a black QB? Does technically he has a better resume? He's gonna, he's gonna grow some. He's gonna grow some locks on you, and then what are you gonna do? Nah, he had to get a Jerry curl first. Yeah, <laughs> gold chain of practice every day. Like that's he's like, like Beverly Hills Cop. Nah, man, he gonna be looking like he was in Prince's Entourage, but he was the one dude who had the burner on him. The one dude in Prince's Ooh. Entourage who would shoot you. Dave Chappelle, my, he's the toughest dude in Prince's Entourage. Prince. But yeah, man, Ruben Foster. So his ex girlfriend, I guess she's his ex girlfriend as of this week. I don't know what the situation is. Yeah, that was. But yeah, she was on um, good. Morning Good Morning America, America this week, you know, was, pretty much saying she lied the first time when she took back love. her statement. She lied out of love because she thought he would change. Yeah, and that pretty much she he flew her out there to Florida and like, you know, the Niners intervened. The whole situation went down. The the night the forty she said the Forty Niners intervened and tried to like kind of sabotage her. The police didn't believe her. What? Fam, fam, f- fix your audio on your end. But um, I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, but it's uh, it's almost like it's too little, too late in that situation for both of those people. Like I re- like the whole she lied thing when it first came out, and he was. Seemingly vilified, or not vilified, but like, um, totally just all right, he's innocent, scot free. But yeah, I would have cut him too, just based off a third arrest. Like, bro, you went through all that and you get arrested again with the same chick. Like, come and on, and he already caught a marijuana charge from January. Yeah, like, I, at this point, you should just put a red flag on all Alabama line, middle linebackers. No, all line, all Alabama linebackers, until further notice. And by the way, just to to kind of delve into the psyche of it a little bit. Rashawn Evans has actually been playing pretty good, though. Yeah. And CJ Murphy. Yeah. Which, those are the two that we were like, eh, they're kind of average. Yeah, but they're better pros. But... Maybe, you, maybe because they weren't overdrafted and overhyped. I don't know. Facts. But yeah, she also said that she received a concussion from the incident, and she said she's been in therapy since then. So hopefully, they both get the help they need because it's really just an ugly situation all around, especially for two young people like that. Um. I think about the fact that he was the best player in Alabama when he came out. He stayed in the state of Alabama. He could have went to Auburn. He chose to go to Alabama. He had people literally sending him death threats in high school because he went to Alabama instead of Auburn. And he became everything. And he was, he was a middle linebacker being considered as a top 10 pick. And he literally Battle became... Battle to Rome <sighs> We're not going to talk about that man anymore. Um <laughs> He literally became everything he was supposed to be at Alabama. And here you have it again. Including including the second coming of Rolando McClain. A zing. A better... ah! I'm petty as fuck today. Bruh. <laughs> I mean, really, everybody was like, oh, he's not Rolando McClain. He's not Rolando McClain. They Guess what? Similar 40 time. Similar weed possession. Similar violent issues. <sighs> like, yeah, man. 
Alabama players who go to Alabama. <sighs> Alabama Bro. middle linebackers who are considered the best player on the team as a sophomore. You should be worried. And that's really unfortunate, man, because kid has a kid can ball. Foster can play. And he was even yeah, like Fred yeah, Warner was that well this year. Yeah, yeah, but Fred Warner was taking over at middle linebacker, another person that the Raiders passed on. Shout out to Fred Warner out of BYU. Do you think? Keep balling, even though 48 times we ass number. Um, it's just, there's so much bad decision making on this end when it comes to the Redskins, because, like, he's on the exemplist. He ain't going to play a practice. Kareem Hunt, on the exemplist, exemplist ain't going to play a practice. And his ex girlfriend said she was shocked that he got signed. And I'm like, are we really shocked that a sport that is built on violence and barbarism on the field, uh, that leads people to having eroding mental conditions, that feeds on people's deepest, darkest insecurities and mental hang ups, like let's say coming from poverty and literally being a dog your whole life to fighting to get out to playing a certain way? And everyone loving it and not thinking that that switch doesn't flip or that switch isn't maybe broken when they come off the field and interact with people in the real world. I don't understand how we don't realize that football really is a microcosm of the real world. And well, even it's a besides, socially sick even, sport. Well, it's a socially sick sport. Just, it's a blood just sport. To take that, just to take that to the next level, I mean, even the two things we just talked about, between Kareem Hunt and Ruben Foster, it's like you're really seeing how reactionary of a society we are. Like, here we're, we're talking about two people both with, with you know, slight histories of violence and issues in the past year. But the biggest difference is not to play, you know, we saw Ruben Foster prison coming. Olympics. Not to play prison Olympics here, but, you know, Ruben Foster is a repeated, like, legit domestic violence thing that happened in team presence. And Kareem Hunt is a more random act of just pure violence. But the biggest difference is I would say it just, was caught um, on tape. Yeah, I would say with Hunt, it was just a young it was hothead. On tape. It was a young hothead. Because I don't think he's naturally this mean evil person he didn't really come off like that in the well, video Foster is too. remember foster got kicked out of the combine yeah but no no foster had red flags dating back to his to his high school and alabama days and just watch some of the hits that he put on to sean watson that were kind of dirty in the in the national championship games those two but years. the point that i'm trying to make is realistically kareem hunt is probably the better player kareem hunt probably has a better reputation, but yet Kareem Hunt isn't signed and Ruben Foster is, and that's really just a big indicator of the fact that there's an actual video that people can see and react to versus Foster. And the and the, and the, 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 the dead skins really need a linebacker to pair with uh, Zach Brown. They've needed it for a while. And it was kind of the same thing with um, – even like Ray Rice and Greg Hardy, like you know, Ray Rice's video was bad. There's no way around that for sure. But Greg Hardy threw his chick on shotguns and like did like real oppressive, like violent shit. Bro, repeatedly. he's in MMA right now, beating the shit out of people. That is a violent man, and he had issues at the combine too. But yeah, man. Is there anything else you want to say on um, Ruben Foster? All Alabama linebackers now have this stigma because of guys like him. Yep. Straight up. Hey, man, and I, I forgot to say it earlier when we were talking about Colt McCoy, but uh, shout out to Alex Smith, man. He pretty much, with his surgery, Catching an infection, so he's probably going to be out longer than even first anticipated. 
So hopefully his career can get right and he doesn't get, you know. Fuck all that. I just want him to Charles walk again. Bentley I don't want him to lose. Sharif Floyd or, you know. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about this. These other, cats, these other cats who've had serious injuries and then. Horribly misdiagnosed. You know, malpractice things and then pretty much their career's over and they have to deal with some sort of ailment. Like JoJo Vicious got MRSA, Alex Mack. But Charles Bentley's knee looks disgusting outside of. There's, the I mean, it's bad enough, like your season being. That's a shitty hospital, injury. too, apparently. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shout out it's to Obi. bad enough. It's bad enough to have your season end because of injury, but it's even worse to, like, have your career cut short because of a you went to a case. shitty hospital. Oh, and not only that, uh, he might, he could, worst case scenario, lose his leg. Because of the infections from the injury. Because he had a hematoma where the bone breaks through the skin. Yeah, that shit's horrible. I'm praying for him. He's a really great guy, and he's done a ton of work in the community everywhere he's been as far as, um, you know, his, 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 his community service. Everybody has nothing but great things to say about him. And he really did. He's the reason the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. And they're able to do what they do. Because he really was the bridge for them. Like, he's he's been done great enough teammate. work in the community for you to overlook the fact that I said he, he, was enabled, in the Ur- club. he enabled Urban Meyer to get this far and overstage your boy Colin Kaepernick. But, yeah. I'm not going to blame um and, car for that. And for – and furthered on the narrative that Andy Reid chokes in the playoffs. Nah, I'm going to blame. And he went to Utah. I'm okay, and I'm gonna blame all of those. Florida you dubbed Rams. him the king of the noodle arm. He was for, for a long near, time. He, he for was, nearly your whole entire he, career. He was until really. he showed me something in Kansas City, and I was like, all right. No, he he got he always had an arm to get it down there. He just didn't want to do it. It's cool, but you know he. He's, but yeah, man. but I would say I would blame that entire Florida recruiting class. I blame Florida. <laughs> I blame Florida as a school because the same problems they had under Urban Meyer, they're still having now. So what? Changed? Which? Which does that leave us? They kicked a, play for college football. Does it? And Urban Meyer's big announcement. Hey, Urban Meyer decided he's going to retire after the Rose Bowl game against Washington. By the way, Chris Peterson actually really needs to win this game. He has, like, the winningest. Like, he has Jake Brown, the winningest quarterback in school history with all the records, and Miles Gaskin, the all-time leading rusher. Great corners, by the way. Yeah, you kind of need to win this game. Which, by the way... Number one, I want to say Ohio State probably, like, low-key forced them out at the beginning of the year. Like, hey, Herb, we're going to stand behind you through this whole suspension thing and this whole, you know, your assistant coach going off on you thing. Zach Smith, but we, but really, we really like Ryan Day. You should probably step away from the team and, you know, work on your family and maybe go back to college game day for, like, three weeks again. Ha! Ha, ha, ha! <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty similar to how he left Bruh. Florida all unexpectedly. He had health issues. It was like, he oh, doesn't have a cyst in his brain, though. Back. When really, cats are like, hey, Herb, um, yeah, I got these photos on you, and we need to have a talk. Damn. Herb knows. Thirty for thirty. That's that's fucked up. <laughs> what if I told you there was a head coach who single handedly redeemed like four college football programs and also single handedly took them down? Thirty for thirty. Herb knows. Bruh. I'm trying to think of something that goes with Meyer. Is it, is it Meyer? No, 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 no. Meyer's remorse, like Byers' remorse, Meyer's remorse. Is that the title of this episode? I think it is. 
<laughs> Damn, we are really well, good yeah, at this man. journalism shit. Give it. You're you're the college football expert, so why don't you give your your synopsis on Herb Meyer and everything? This is moments where I wish Jordan would call in, but you're on the phone, so we can't do that. But uh, it, he'll he'll get this will this will get to him. So uh, I think it was the perfect time for him to step away. I also know that Cliff Kingsbury signed on to be USC's offensive coordinator, and that is huge. Uh, if Clancy stays on, I really. He's good, but I just really wish they would just stick to either running a 4-3 or a 3-4 and not that bullshit amoeba defense they got where their their defensive linemen don't get enough sacks or enough pressures, and it's just a waste because they have too much talent on that defense to suck the way they fucking do and to give up all the big plays they gave up. Shout-out to Amon Marshall actually having one of the lowest. Um, he, he gave up the, the least amount of yards per catch. And he probably won't be an All American. I actually got to look up, see if they finish the rewards. But we do know that Kyler Murray um, essentially won AP Player of the Year. He was voted for that. But more in this Meyer situation, Ryan O'Day he has the team. It's just the right time to step down. And honestly, he's finally doing what he's doing with Dwayne Haskins that should have been done more with JT Barrett. Like, Ohio State just needs to be a passing offense that can turn around and pound the rock. But they have two NFL running backs in J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber. So, yeah. And those cats easily could have both rushed for 1,000 yards this year. But I think they'll figure that out. Uh, Yeah, they lost Bosa, but they have NFL talent even on a bad defense. So, when it comes to Ohio State, especially... Huh? I mean, I, I guess what I really want to know is, you know, since we are talking head podcast, like, where is Urban Meyer going to go in the next two years? I'm telling you, you can end up at like, USC. We were talking about it off air with, with uh, Bruce and and uh, Mike I was like, bro, imagine he just ends makes up sense. at USC. And that would make sense why. Where why else are you going to go? Fire Clay Helton, give him one year, give Urban Meyer a year off, and then get him. And Cliff Kingsbury can't be mad because it's like Urban Meyer's a coaching god. You just stay I'm here. Give you, Cliff, I'm a, stay I'm here and be the coach in waiting for like five years because you went from Texas Tech to USC. You actually leveled up. Master these Pac-12 how about, offenses. How about Oregon? Nah, because Crystal Ball is doing a good job in Oregon. How about Michigan? He would never cross that line. That's like asking, would you have sex with your sister? Really? Yes. Urban Meyer wouldn't cross that line? Bro, if he if he went to Michigan, no. It wouldn't happen. You're, no. I'm, I'm, Auburn? huh? Gus Malzahn, Gus Malzahn has naked pictures of everyone and is hustling Auburn. So, no. By the way, Kelly Bryant decided to go to Mizzou. The Clemson transfer instead of Auburn. He's going to Mizzou. So Drew. outside of USC, where 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 do you where would you put Urban Myers? LSU once they fire Coach five. Ogeron. LSU once they fire Coach Ogeron. Okay. And that would take all. He he could just he could be there forever. Because he'll get a so quarter. Saying- he'll get a quarterback to to LSU, and they will love him forever. Cause all LSU you think he wants is, that, that Nick Saban smoke once a year? I think he wants to make Nick Saban his bitch and then retire. That's the only reason why Nick Saban's been this dominant, bro. Think about, How about it. Florida State. Nah, Willie. By the way, Willie Taggart really got a raw deal. Um, the fact that there are people on that campus putting racist memes up of him being lynched and hung. Yeah, shit that only black coaches go through. Um and as you alluded to it in the early episode, early iterations of this How podcast, about the you? Oh my God! How about Mark Rick is kind of just coaches his way out of jobs. It's kind of sad, but Don't Urban Meyer doesn't. Urban Meyer can't go back to though. Florida. You know he can't go back to Florida. <laughs> they agree. Stay stay out of Florida. Go to Ohio. Are you, are you sure we're not past? 
the statues of limitations. And he can't go to Connecticut either. He can't go coach UConn because we know about that. We're not going to talk about that. Do I need to bring up UConn and why he can't go coach at UConn? So, so, so what's his what's his third team? Uh, Boise State. If Brian Harson gets a better offer, I could see He's him. He's not going to Boise State. Boise State gets four star recruits now, bro. Routinely, He's three not four star recruits. State. He went to Utah. He was at Utah. Why well, think would there be no yeah, pressure? That was on his. That was on his come up. Boise State is not going to give him twenty million a year. He don't need it. He could be doing it for the good of his heart. So I just want to return to my Mountain West roots. You just talked about Urban Meyer. Come on, bro. I mean, then I would say a Pac-12 school, either USC. Michigan State? No. D'Antoni is a, is a god there. They're never going to get rid of D'Antoni. Um, I think, oh, I actually, I, I heard a, apparently Alabama's offensive coordinator. Uh, I forget his name off the top of my head. Uh, black dude, yeah. Alabama has like a black offensive coordinator. I didn't even know that. Uh, he's going to accept the job to be the head coach at Maryland, which he's from Maryland, so that's perfect. That's a perfect fit. But I would have to say it'd either be somewhere big like USC. LSU could lure him away. Uh, I wouldn't say a Big 12 school. Because it's just, I mean, it would be a nice fit. Like, I, but I'm trying to see where, what, I mean, because uh, Kansas State's head coach uh, re-retired again. Bill Snyder, he retired again, but you're not going to coach at Kansas State. Uh, Texas is taken. Te- no, actually, yeah, Texas is taken. So Baylor? No, Matt Rule got them to six and six in the first bowl, and they're bowl eligible, so he's not going anywhere, and he's cleaning up the program. Colorado? No, they already hired a guy. They already hired somebody. I can't remember their name though. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much, you're just standing for him to go to USC. It's either USC, LSU, or where else? Where else is he gonna go, bro? Somewhere in the ACC? North. Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go in the ACC that's worth it? He can't go to Florida. Florida. He can't go to Florida. I told you. He can't go to Florida. Florida's out. (laughs) Stop saying Florida. Stop saying any state near Florida. He's not going to finish check. Justin Fintuez is doing a pretty good job there. Try again. You see? I don't know, man. I get I've given you like literally twenty five teams. I'm overlooking so many regions because they're not even worth mentioning. <laughs> Cal? No, Justin uh, Wilcox just got an extension until twenty twenty three. He had their defense. He's improved Cal's defense leaps and bounds every year, and he's starting to get better athletes there. So watch out for Cal because Gerald Alexander, former Boise State great uh, safety, is their DB's coach. And you know, the Vegas Boise... Raiders. No, man, Urban Meyer. I told you, he's either coming out <laughs> one last time for USC. Hey, no, the Bengals. No, there's no point in Urban Meyer coaching again. The Dolphins. Unless... Bro, stop! I told you he can't go to Florida. <laughs> Jeez, he could go pro. Are you drunk? Are you drunk this week? Are, this are you? Is, are, are you Patron Pete this week? Huh? Are you Patron Pete this week? All right, man. Fuck it. I'm over it. Cause, Next topic. Because let's be honest. Like, er, it's it's either USC, LSU, or Bubkiss. There's not much. There's nowhere yeah. else for him to really go. Huh? Pitt? Pitt? No. Pitt's not a national <laughs> contender like that. You're just reaching for straws because you don't really watch college football. No, I'm just reach. I'm just reaching for people who are desperate to get a winning coach, and who they can't afford him. Pitt can't afford him. Try again. This is you're actually you're getting apartment? warmer. You're getting warmer. Are they a part of a university? I they're think they they're are. ACC. They're in the ACC. I think they're a private university, though. Don't matter. They're in the ACC. That means they got money. 
that means they're not beating Clemson. Did you? They lost. 40, <laughs> they lost forty-two to ten. Dabo Sweeney, oh, that's his trap. Try again. Georgia, right, maybe. Well, like not, not even Georgia. No, not Georgia. Georgia, there. Georgia Tech. Uh, Paul Johnson retired, one of the greatest head coaches in their school history. Uh, he also had Calvin Johnson. So there's that. Um, Calvin Johnson came out of that offense, and Demarius Thomas. All right, next topic, man. Speaking of coaches who got are who are gonna... leaving, um, um, go for it. The world's tiniest violin is playing for Mike McCarthy right now, as he got fired, and one of his assistants, um, I forget his first name, Moss, was a head coaching candidate a few years ago. He's been on the staff since like 2001. Winston Moss. Uh, been, Winston Moss. There you go. He was let go after pretty much saying the team needs a, a real leader to lead them to a Super Bowl, to lead Aaron Rodgers and company to the Super Bowl. Which I guess people kind of interpreted it as a diss on Aaron Rodgers, saying that he's not a leader, that he needs a coach or something like that. Whatever the case was, he was also fired this week. So, what do you make of that whole situation happening in Green Bay? It was long overdue. Honestly. Yeah, man. They needed a culture change. And no, Urban Meyer won't coach the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> no, he won't be coaching at Wisconsin. He won't be coaching at Wisconsin either. And no, he can't coach at UCF. Green Bay might not be a bad fit for him. Shut up. Stop it. Kind of like a college town. No, they're not. They're kind of like a college team. No, they're not. I mean, they're a publicly owned team. That's kind of like, you know, football boosters. And do you want the surge in crime on the team to go up? Every, everywhere Urban Meyer's been, have there not been a, an, a stupid amount of legal issues? Cats getting accused of whatever. Everywhere Urban Meyer's gone, except maybe Utah. I don't know. Maybe if they brought, maybe Herb might find a running back for them instead of them chasing the ghost of Oman Green. Wait, Oman Green went. <laughs> so he went to Nebraska and then. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm saying. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Dorsey Levin. I'm saying Green Bay hasn't had a running back since Amon Green. They had Dorsey Levins and they had Ryan Grant. Ryan Grant Try played again? at Notre Dame. Okay, damn. The slander. Honestly, Ryan Grant was good for like a season and a half. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody poached, uh, I think it's Eric B. I mean, the Chiefs offensive coordinator. Finally got a shot as an yeah. offensive coordinator. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody poached him. Because you poach him, that dude has the blueprint for Mahomes. And how to stop him. All you need is a quarterback to do the same thing. Pump some lifeblood into Aaron Rodgers and that offense. He has the receivers. Valdez, Scantling, Equamia St. Brown, um, Devontae Adams, Adam. Randall Cobb. Uh, I think Geronimo Ellison, like, they're deep at receiver. They have guys who can get down there and make plays. I think I would I would go for that higher. I'm like, look, you just need to be – like, I just, I'll give you your shot at the Packers. You just need to fix the offense. Fix the offense. Fix the defense by just getting younger up front at linebacker because they're probably going to move Clay Matthews because he makes too much money and doesn't produce anything. I think uh, Nick Perry went on IR, and they're probably going to get better help. At it. Like, Oren Burks is good, but they're probably going to move him outside. Um, I could see Josh McDaniels going there. No, nah, Josh McDaniels is going to be the, Patri- is the Patriots head coach in waiting. But I'm saying for a hot new hire, I, 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 I would pick I the Chiefs head. Him. I'd pick the Chiefs I offensive coordinator. Him. I could see him. Going to the Packers. Yeah, it could happen. I could see him. 
I could see him passing on being the Patriots coach and waiting to take that job. True. I mean, I, I mean, other than that, I mean, we, we're not going to see. I don't think Wade Phillips is going to be a coach again. Nope. I don't think Nerf Turner is going to be a coach again. Nope. Uh, who, who are some of the other good coordinators? The the Texans coordinators? Nope. I don't even know who their coordinators are. Off the Doesn't top of matter. Head. Nope. The Bears coordinators? Nope. Matt Nagy's fresh, so they're still there. Nobody on the Bengals. Does Dennis Allen get another shot? Fuck no. No. Uh, offensive coordinator? Uh, uh, what's his face? I can't remember his name. Um, Bruce Arians could come back and coach the Packers. Nah, I don't, I don't think that's the right fit for him. He's an offensive guru. Shaw? Would Shaw take the Packers job? I don't think Shaw's willing to leave Stanford. I think he's too busy just trying to overtake USC and stomp them out completely that he's not going to leave Stanford. Because if he was going to leave Stanford, he would have left two years ago. He would have left with Christian McCaffrey. To be honest. Yeah, so, I, so I, I mean, I don't know who, who else is desirable candidates out there. You got to imagine they go offensive again. That's why the Chiefs offense. That's why the Chiefs offensive coordinator did. is perfect. Because that beef, that defense is rebuilding. They just had a lot of injuries. The defense is, re- yeah. is reloading and rebuilding. Their D line is practically set. They just had a bunch of injuries. The offensive line needs more depth behind it. They need to get a true running back in this draft. Benny Snell would be a good compliment to Aaron Jones. But I think they just they need someone like if they can find a running back like that of a Joe Mixon, they're set. But I think they need a they need to find a tight end. They need to uh, re up depth on the offensive line. Uh, a running back, pass rushers, and safeties. But I would say running back first. Then pass rushers, uh, then some linemen. And some it's safety, like all, and a tight end. all the good coordinators right now are like former head coaches that are washouts. I mean, no, or just really good coordinators who have been coordinated. Like a lot of the head coaches, the young head coaches at least, are offensive innovators, and I think that's what you need right now in this league. So, like I said, the Chiefs offensive coordinator does, I mean, would does be perfect. Gus Bradley get another gig? Does no. Schwartz get another gig? No, hell no, Schwartz doesn't get another gig. And Gus Bradley. I don't know. What's that? The head coach for Atlanta? What's his name? Spacing out on his name. How about, how about, how about Fangio? Stop. Stop. You're not even trying anymore. Why would I Bro, give Nick I'm... Fangio... A head coaching job when they just because lost to the Giants. Because he turned around that sorry ass defense. They drafted properly and got lucky with Cleo Mack. They were a good defense before Cleo Mack got there. Yeah, bro, but you know how this shit happens. It's the the, the sexy team that comes Fangio, on the scene. But their Fangio, offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators are the ones who get hired. But if Fangio was gonna get a job, he would have got it. At the height of Harbaugh. <laughs> Same way Pep Hamilton would have gotten. Which he did. Well, he's got he got a, an he offensive got coordinator job and he got fired. He got in the fallout of Harbaugh. That, that was Jim Tom Sula. Oh. Yeah. Bad. I thought, I thought Fangio, was, wasn't he the interim coach? Nope. There was Jim Tom Sula, the defensive line coach, and then they made him a permanent head coach. But do you want to hear about the college football awards that happened tonight? I mean, you could talk about it. We only got like 15 minutes. All right. So, Tua Tagovailoa, 
out of Alabama, won the Max, won the Maxwell wow, Award. Did you practice that? Yeah, a little bit. Not really though. I'm just that talented. <laughs> I'm just that talented of a mic. Um, he won the Maxwell Award Player of the Year. Thirty three hundred passing yards, thirty seven touchdowns, four picks, hundred ninety rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns. Sixty seven point seven percent of his passes, and he's actually right handed, but he throws left handed. And also, he said that his dad would beat him if, when he plays bad. He gets the belt. He insinuated that in the interview. We'll get on that next week, though. Um, Cause yeah, we'll just get on that next week. And you know, Alabama's playing perfect. So, <sighs> Kyler Murray was also up for that award, but Kyler Murray won AP Player of the Year. The Chuck Bettnerick Award, Defensive Player of the Year, linebacker Josh Allen out of Kentucky, 84 tackles, 18 and a half for loss, SEC record, 14 sacks, and five forced fumbles. He helped fuel Kentucky to a 9-3 season, um, and Benny Snell Jr. was on the offensive side of the ball and did great things for them. Josh Allen could be a a Von Miller type riser as far as his ability. Wouldn't be mad if the Raiders actually took Josh Allen out of Kentucky. I'm just going to be honest. Even though I'm not a Raiders fan anymore, that would be the smart thing to do. But, you know, they're not smart. So, hey. And he also is the all-time leading rusher in Kentucky history. He actually uh, had, I think, two or three sacks on senior day. And that's how he got it. Uh... Davey O'Brien Award, Kyler Murray out of Oklahoma, 4,000 passing yards, 40 touchdowns, 7 picks, 892 rushing yards, 11 scores, and he beat out uh, he beat out Tua and Gardner Minshew the second out of Washington State. And Murray, a lot of people are saying he might be reconsidering his decision to play baseball and come back to college and actually give it a go at the NFL. What do you think about that? Pete? I mean, sorry, I was on mute. I'm gonna say I you. mean, I think... I think the baseball to football situation is kind of weird because it's always like, you know, if you make it... Even when you make it in baseball, you don't always make it. You know, it could take you 10 years like Samaja. But on the other hand... You know, you can go and live that and come back to football like Brandon Whedon, like Hayden Hurst, and stuff like that. And there Drew is Hansen. more money to be made, less long-term bodily injury risk, less head injury risk, but also more games. So, I mean, it's always some. It's always a difficult situation. I mean, obviously, I'm a football player, so, you know, I naturally just think baseball players are pussies. But, yeah, besides all that. Bruh. I mean, I, mean <laughs> I don't know any baseball players who can fight. If I be a baseball player. I swing on any baseball player living. Tell me a high school baseball player that isn't that hasn't worked in a warehouse or cheated on their girlfriend, um, or both at the same time. I was gonna say Giancarlo Stanton was actually a better tight end than baseball player, but that don't really count. He could he was probably gonna go to USC, but he decided to go play baseball. But I, I'm not really counting that. Yeah, man. Okay. So. Um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. No, I got I got like a couple more winners and I'm almost done. Uh, All right, here you DeAndre go. Breaker, cornerback out of Georgia. Uh, he won a Thorpe Award, best DB. Two picks, nine pass breakups, 39 tackles, and a forced fumble. Um, he has a .45 yards per coverage per cover snap, which is really good. He allowed a passer rating of 38.9. And his overall grade is 88.7. But that's just what Pro Football Focus says. So, yeah, shout out to your favorite uh, stats publication. And Greedy Williams was also up for that. So was uh, Notre Dame's Julian Love. Doak Walker Award winner. This was interesting. Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin. 
Um, as a sophomore, he f- had uh, 1,989 yards rushing, 15 touchdowns, and averaged 7.1 yards a carry. And it was his second straight 1,900-yard rushing season. He had 1,900 yards rushing, 13 scores as a, fr- a true freshman. He had 200 yards rushing in a game four times and had 321 yards rushing and three scores on 33 carries against Purdue. Um, one of his best performances of the season. And he's also the fourth Wisconsin running back to win the Doak Walker Award. First was Ron Dane, then Monty Ball, then Melvin Gordon, now Jonathan Taylor. It'll be interesting to see what he does next year's junior year. It'll be interesting to see how he tests well at the Combine. Because he's really talented, and that but that Wisconsin offensive line is also loaded with NFL talent. Um, Memphis running back Daryl Henderson, many people thought he was going to be a favorite. He didn't win, but he was also up there. And Travis Etne for Clemson, who's been a dog all year. The Belitnikoff Award winner, now this is going to piss you off, but I just want you to be patient and listen. Jerry Judy from Alabama, um, making plays for them all year long 59 catches 1103 yards receiving an sec record 12 receiving touchdowns and he averaged 18.7 yards a carry i mean 18.7 yards a catch and he scored two touchdowns in four different games he's better than calvin ridley is he he's 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 the second player to win it since amari cooper it's hard to believe julio jones didn't win the bullet in the cough but yeah Second player, second Alabama player to win the better than Calvin Ridley? He, he might be better than Calvin Ridley. We don't know. He's definitely he a deep better player. than Amari Cooper? I don't know, man. Going to have to just let everything play out, but he did win a Bolitnikoff. So, I'm asking you. But I don't think he is because you got to wait till next year. He's still young. Um, Quinnen Williams out of Alabama won the Outland Trophy Most Outstanding Interior Lineman. Um, he's another great Alabama D tackle. What can you say? 66 tackles, 18 for loss, eight sacks, 11 hurries. And a lot of people were saying he's like Aaron Donald. Um, the Lou Groza award, best kicker, Andrew Smith's out of Syracuse. I'm only saying All right, bro, a really Syracuse, bro, a Syracuse, no, 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 no. Right a now. Syracuse player actually won something. So Come on, go. man. A Syracuse player. Yeah. Oh, and this is going to really make you laugh. Um, the Ray Guy Award, punter of the year. Brandon Mann out of Texas A&M. A Texas A&M punter won, a, won the punter of the year award. Isn't that where Townsend's from? No, that's Florida. Shane Leckler's right. from Texas A&M. All right, man. So can I talk about my shit now? Go for it. All right, so I'll just go real quick so we can get to the rant since, you know, you you were long-winded today, and we had a, a good open forum session. Bro, we talked about a lot of stuff today. That's why. Yeah. So first of all, um, some more bad news or crazy news, whatever you want to say. Brandon Browner got eight years um, for essentially attempted attempting murder. to murder him. Baby, my, or his girlfriend, baby mom. Baby what mom. He was wild on Instagram. It was his baby mom. And, yeah, the kids were in the, the house, so he also got a charge for um, child endangerment. I think it was something like that. But, yeah, man, he's getting 300 days served, so it'll be, like, seven years, and he might get out sooner with good behavior. But, yeah, dude fell into, got kind of co-charged before that, stuff like that, so kind of fell off. Hopefully he could get right. And good news, Ryan Shazier had that spinal injury about roughly a little over a year ago. Dude's starting to work out again. There's some videos of him on Twitter and stuff like that, doing deadlifts. So um, he's getting right. Shout out to him. Rams update. Akeem Tlaib is returning. Aaron Donald has 16 and a half sacks. Which, by the way, that sack on Stafford where he, like, full-on Superman spreads out and strip sacks was both 
terrifying and amazing in the same light. Defensive tackles then, aren't supposed to have abs. Yeah, bro, that that was wild. And then also, Antonio Gates, his family was robbed. Well, I think he was at the game, and his kids were actually in the house. So, man, prayers for him. Hope he gets his shit back. I don't know what's going on with L.A. packing out NFL players right now, but. And Rihanna. I, I, I guess this is why the NFL, you know, left for 20 years because it seems like players keep getting robbed. It's like the it's like the fourth or fifth player this year. That we know of. I guess maybe the Rams and Chargers need to do more gang outreach because nobody's robbing Lakers players. I mean, Chris Paul got robbed, but... People, Chris Talk Paul good. may have said something. Makes up smart. for all the makes for, makes up for all the calls he be reaching on and crying about. I mean, all the, the calls that he steals for flopping. Yeah, pretty much exactly. There you go. You you said what I said, but much more concise and better. Plot twist. And Nate, Native Tongues member. Uh, Calvin Benjamin signed with the Chiefs. Native Times member. Yeah, man. That, that was a Queen Latifah pun. You, only the real hip-hop heads will get it. But yeah, pretty much Living Chico is Calvin Benjamin. This man brought up a Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah reference on this podcast and made it work. On this broadcast and made it work. Calvin Latifah Whatever you want to call him, Calvin Benjamin signed with the Chiefs. Cleo. Uh, which is actually pretty weird considering they haven't really had a big physical receiver like that since Dwayne Cole <laughs> went to Cleveland, grabbed a bag, and production completely fell off. And even besides all that, it's like they really have a lot of speed receivers. So Calvin Benjamin going there is actually kind of interesting. And it might actually work, or he'll just be buried on the depth chart. We'll never see him again. Well, uh, what uh, Michael said, we were talking off air, they're probably just going to make him a tight end. Because uh, I think Harris, their backup tight end, is going to be a free agent. And he's probably he's played I was well gonna enough say, to where he's going to get They paid. don't even need a tight end. Harris is nice. He was balling out on the Raiders. But then again, I could literally line up at tight end. And run circles around to here, Whitehead, and whatever fifth round pick the Raiders line up at linebacker. Ouch, because they have mad fifth round picks at linebacker who fail. <laughs> and then, yeah. The last thing I'll end my segment on is well, besides give it, giving shots to. Russell Wilson for again having a great season and Aaron Donald also being in the MVP race and being on pace to essentially break the sack record. Besides all that, what I really want to know from you. Oh, and he didn't play what, like the first four games? Yeah. But yeah, what I want to know is could the Cardinals beat Alabama? Honestly. Yeah. Patrick Peterson shutting everything down. Uh, it it hurts that Kirsten Kirk is on IR, but Fitzgerald will school Alabama it? Alabama corner. And Cleveland's not a bad the, football team, so they're just young and experienced. I don't they're know if the Ra- I don't know if the Raiders could beat Clemson. I don't think they want that D line smoke. I don't think Clemson. I don't think they want that D line smoke either. <laughs> like, they I don't, don't want linebacker do or safety smoke. Like it would help because they're it's a true freshman quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Um, some of those receivers are kind of nice. Etna is a great running back. It might actually be a close game. <laughs> but all right, man. So I'll give my rant, and then I'll just hang up, and then you can just close off the show. All right, cool. Yeah, man. So. Sh- once again, shout out to the Good News Radio Station for being our home, giving us a platform, a way for me to call in. 
Shout out to FPC Radio for, you know, a replay spot. Shout out to the whole FPC Raiders family. Um, really dipped into my Raiders bag this week, you know, called out the media for essentially, and I hate saying the media. I just hate that term. Like, I, I don't know. I need to think of a better term. But, yeah, shout it out mainstream media uh, for essentially calling John Gruden and being stands and, and John Gruden basically being a large cog in the funnel and wheel that is the media, as well as essentially writing one of my favorite players, one of my greater idols and great, one of the best people I've ever seen put on the silverback, Silver and Black, I essentially wrote his obituary, so you can actually catch that on FPC Raiders. Yes, I'm referring to trading in the car. So stay tuned for that. Another shameless plug, also deaded the Raiders signing Kareem Hunt because it's just not a good PR move right now. And lastly, you'll find out what the actual future of the Raiders is. So definitely stay tuned for my little series this week. Went into my content bag. And last but not certainly not least, shout out to the X Squad affiliates, man. Uh, shout out to shout out to Mo. We got to get on the show, man. Uh, no, I've been sleeping on that, lagging on that, so I got to coordinate that, get that set up coming soon. Outside of that, episode one hundred and one, the wrap. I'm glad that we were able to do this, and for me to still be safe and not have to drive in that fucked up ass rain that literally almost killed me in my car. So yeah. Stay tuned. Oh, wait, before I get to, oh, shit, I almost left off the whole most important shit of my whole entire rant. A thing I didn't get to last week, man. Honestly, credit scores are the most bullshit shit of all time. And I know Kenny likes to boast about his credit score. But really, when you really think about it, credit scores are really fucking stupid because, like, you really give the people with the worst credit the highest rates. So, like, you'll qualify them. You'll make them pay 30000 for 20000 But the person who can actually afford the 20000 you only charge them 20000 Like, yeah, I get it. There's risk assessed to that, and I get that's what a credit score is. But, like, there's so much more to people, and, like, fuck your credit score. That's all I got to say, man. Fuck your credit score, and fuck your favorite podcast. And yeah, man, I know all the cloud chasers are going to be listening to the X album this week, but I'll listen to it just just to support him. But outside of that, man, I've also been listening to my man Ski Mask album, giving him support because more than just the industry bullshit that is the X album with, with them putting him on collaborations with all these big names that he never even worked with, a la Kanye West. Uh, yeah, man, Ski is actually the living X. He's actually the legacy of X and Juice World, and a lot of people are as well. So it's like, it's kind of weird where it's like you got to listen to other people's albums to actually get that authentic, true sense of X when you can't even listen to his album that's coming out because it's really just some industry bullshit. But yeah, oh. And one last thing. Man, I got a lot of shit this week, huh? I know I'm going to have to tune in as soon as I hang up just because I want to hear Kenny's reaction to this last bit of my rant that I'm going to say. Daytona was not the best hip-hop album of the year. Kamikaze was better. FM was better. A lot of shit was better. Don't look me in the face and tell me that a seven-track album that was an EP and probably should have been a mixtape was the album of the year from the hip-hop genre. There was so much dope shit. And granted, not as much dope shit as last year, but still, a lot of really great shit. And honestly, I don't even like Kid C Ghost, but I would put that album over Daytona and Nazir over that album. Not only do they have way more replay value, not only are they sonically better, but yeah, they didn't get famous off of one diss track. So yeah, man, that's it. Touchdowns and tangents. I'm out. What the 
fuck is Pete talking about? Um, <clears throat> no, I'm just playing. Um, to address some things he was talking about, especially going into last week, <sighs> this broadcast, and we said it, we kind of said one of our taglines last week. We've forgotten more about sports and journalism and a lot of shit than some of these so-called media people who are clout chasing cats who are supposed to be journalists trying to get agents and shit, trying to get TV deals, but then telling classrooms of prospective journalism students, oh, you're my competition. I think that's really, first off, you pussy for that. Like, these are kids who are in school, some of whom pick journalism because they think it's a noble cause. Other people who do it because they have a passion for writing. They're good at writing. Me, personally, I need journalism worth shit. I've always been a great writer, and I've known it. But I sought it out as a noble profession because I believed that when you when you give people the truth, it's almost better than any weapon. And there's no real weapon you can forge against the truth. Last time I checked. So, personally, last week, yeah, I was drunk towards the end and in the middle, some of the beginning. But everything I said when I was drunk. I meant that shit. Uh, Aside from the fact that there are, yeah, in my individual case, there are a lot of people who I know I'm better than. Straight up. Just, like, individually, I'm fucking better than you in, like, every way possible. But people... And this is what I don't like about, like, we use... There were terms when I was younger, like social climbing, that used to exist, that are just... They're so far out of the way into just people are now just kissing ass, clout chasing, doing whatever they got to do to get on, doing whatever they got to do to make somebody look bad. They think, oh, just because you tell the truth, like you're a piece of shit, you're a scumbag. And also a thing that I've noticed, we shoot bail to people who we like, even if they're dead ass wrong. But somebody who you may not like, who probably never did nothing to you, but is speaking the truth, you will crucify them. And I think that shit's gross and disgusting. And I've always been the kind of person where it's like, I'm not really popular, but I'm well known and respected. And honestly, I hated a lot of the popular kids I went to school with. And I played football. So I was known outside of the classroom, but I was also known because I played football and my story and everything. And I can tell you, a lot of people who were popular I knew in high school are fucking losers now. You might as well die tomorrow because you've literally wasted your whole life. Like, your best days are behind you. I'm not going to say who are going to details, but with this broadcast and what we do and how far we've come, I look at it as when I die... I can look back and say, what did I give to people when I was here? What space did I provide? And it was, it's interesting because this kid from Seaside, a little freshman, he was like scrambling and worried. He's like, he hit me up on Twitter. He only has like two followers. He doesn't have a profile picture up. Uh, Shout out to him. He's, he's making his way in this world. He's trying. Um, and he reached out to me and that took guts. Like, and I was shocked. I was like, wait, you reached out to me, but Hey, he found me somehow. Um, reached out to me, asked me a bunch of questions, uh, regarding journalism and what he should look for, and what he should do. And I kind of relay what I said to him. I said, you know, I pretty much broke it down to like, <laughs> fuck you, Pete. This podcast is like a lost cause. Yeah, like, your hairline ever getting better. I'm kidding. Love you, Pete. Um, But, nah. uh, What I told the kid was, I was like, look, you got to understand the business of media and understand that journalism is just a piece of it. 
But you gotta understand how the business works and how it moves, and where, where and how the money's being made. Because there's only like six people that own all the media conglomerates. Um, and this is this kind of goes back to why I always say the conglomerate is manifesting itself. Because I feel like touchdowns and tangents, same way good news radio, or just good news period. It's a conglomerate that manifests itself every second, every minute, every hour of every day. Constantly growing and getting better. Constantly establishing itself from the grassroots. From people who sacrifice their time and have things to say. And are connecting the dots. Even if it's on a small level. I feel like we're doing more and have more of an impact than some of these so-called... Huge media heads who are really just talking heads and have agents and probably went to school because they wanted to be famous, not because they actually wanted to do good journalistic work. Because a lot of that shit's a conflict of interest. Yes, I just said conflict of interest. <clears throat> but back to what I was telling the kid. Uh, shut up, Pete. I'm getting to the shits. So what I told the kid, I was like, you know, the business of journalism, politics, and uh, realizing that being in the industry, the industry exists whether we exist or not. The industry is what it is, whether it's media, technology, whatever. The industry exists. The only thing that matters is your network. Who do you have around you? Can you depend on five other people to get work done? Yo, Pete. I don't care that I'm in five minutes. Shut up. You're not here. Anyway. So, I feel like your network for anyone. Okay, fuck you, Pete. You're going to say this is why I'm not a mic. Ha, ha, ha. You're funny. You're a funny guy. Uh, But honestly, your network is more important than the industry that you're in. Because your network, you can take anywhere to any industry. Who... Can you depend on who has your back through thick and thin, whatever? That's your network of people. Who can you trust? Not who can you socially climb off of to falsely get you ahead. Nah. If you can't create on your own, can you really say you're actually creating? You're creating using somebody else's tools. But if I told you you have to start all over and do it on your own, could you? That's something that you got to think about. So that's kind of what I told the kid. Um, Your network matters more so than the industry. Focus on your network and your net worth will come and it'll rise with who you have around you. That was a fucking bar. Damn, I'm proud of myself. That was a bar. But anyway, uh, also I told him, uh, learn how to code. Um, That's big especially in journalism, learn technology like cameras, learn how to use a soundboard, all that other stuff. Just learn how to use this equipment and use it to your advantage. That way you don't have to wait on anybody else. That's the biggest thing. That's what I told the kid. And I hope it helped him. Uh, to wrap this up, yeah, shout out to my little sister Chelsea. Man, I, I can remember when like, my mom went to false labor so many times as a kid with her. And we, I was worried, like, is she ever going to get here? When is she going to get here? I want to know what my sister looks like. Because, honestly, I wanted a little brother. Let's just keep it a buck. I love you, Chelsea. But I wanted a brother. But it's cool because, honestly, my sister's a big-ass town boy. Like, and it was weird. I used to find her annoying when she would just be all up under me and want to watch me play video games for hours. And I like I really had to sit back like damn like she admires the shit out of me and really values my opinion, so I can't be a piece of shit out here. So that's that's one of the people I'm doing it for. That's some, one of the people I think about before every episode. And uh, I hope I make people like that who have who've had my back and loved me and supported me through tough times, through when. A whole department was against me and trying to blackball me and professors couldn't even look me in the eye and student organizations bailed on me. Um, I had 
my network of people who had my back and looked out for me and told me it's okay. You're going to get back up on your feet. I appreciate those people and I love those people. And I don't, some of those people aren't even my blood relatives. I honestly like a lot of my friends more than I do most of my family, but Hey, that's just how shit works. But, um, to wrap this, to finally wrap this up, uh, Ohio state not getting into the playoffs was bullshit. Again, the big 12, literally they play all these games. There's only 10 teams in the big 12. Then they play an extra game to decide who's going to be the champion. It's kind of just really stupid and necessary. And Oklahoma is only in the playoffs because they're a more flashy, exciting offense. And Kyler Murray's probably going to win the Heisman, which he should. But Dwayne Haskins and Ohio State would probably beat the brakes off Oklahoma's ass. And I know they're better than Notre Dame. But hey. And Dwayne Haskins didn't win Davey O'Brien. That was kind of shocking. But hey, whatever, man. It's all good. Uh, I, I would. Oh yeah, and also the SEC is overrated and trash, and there's no reason why a fucking four-loss Mississippi State team is almost ranked 11th in the country. It's garbage. UCF, uh, I think, is playing LSU. That's going to be a hell of a bowl game. I just wish their quarterback wasn't injured. That'll be a true test for them. But Greedy Williams isn't playing in that game because he declared for the draft, and a bunch of quarterbacks declared for the Senior Bowl. I'll touch on that next week. Let me check the chat room real quick because Pete's probably talking shit again. Ten minutes over time. Killing people's data is playing. Uh, yeah, Pete, kiss my ass. All right. Thank you all for sticking in this long. I appreciate you all. I love you. Take it easy. Be safe. And oh, Pete was right. Pusha T album wasn't out of the year. Uh, it just wasn't. Nothing Kanye produced should win album of the year. Fuck out of here, Kanye. Eat a dick. <laughs>